Howdy folks! Thanks for joining me again for another tutorial. Today's tutorial will be the first of two parts on implementing a sign-in functionality as you can see highlighted here. We'll follow many of the same patterns we use to sign up users, implementing some new methods in the process. Here's the diagram again of what we'll look at today. We'll create this sign-in handler in today's tutorial, which we'll later link up with, for example, a user services sign-in method and a token services new pair from user, which in fact we've already created. And then we'll link these up with the repository and data sources layers as well. All of this to the right from the service layer downward or upward, I'm not sure which direction, we'll do next time as doing the handler layer requires a little bit of testing and setup, so we'll do just this part today. When a user signs in, we're going to want to accept a user's email and password just like we would when we're signing the user up. While the implementation details of signing in and signing up a user differ, the method signatures are going to look the same. If we go to our model layer and to this interfaces file, we can see that our user service already has a method for signing up a user that receives a user and also a Golang context here. Let's go ahead and add an expectation of a sign-in method for this service as well, which will carry the same signature. And just like in the case of the sign-up method, if signing up is successful, we will mutate this user with all of the user details, and if it fails, will return an error, and that's exactly the same in the sign-in method as it is for the sign-up method. Now if I save this, we should get an error or a problem from Go, and here they are, and that is that our mock user service does not implement the sign-in method, nor does our concrete implementation of a user service. So as I said, we're not going to implement this today, so let's go ahead and create a sort of dummy or outline method here just so that this warning goes away, and then we'll also create the implementation on the mock user service. First, let's go to the service layer here and find our user service. And below sign up, let's go ahead and add the dummy version or a version that just panics for our sign in method. If we then save this, hopefully our first warning will go away. Excellent, and now we just need to add this method to our mock user service, and this signature in the mock will be similar to the other mocks we've already created. Let's go to mocks and user service. It should be very similar to this sign up mock here, and we'll add it below. And I'm getting a warning about not having a comment here which is annoying, I should learn to turn this off at some point because there's no real reason in my mind to create a comment for a mock, but let's add that anyway. And I add a <laughs> dumb, really stupid comment that tells us nothing to make this go away. Let's now scaffold out the actual handler. As you can see, if we go back to handler.go here in the handler layer, if I scroll down, you'll see that we have this kind of dummy sign-in method that just returns hello, it's sign-in. Let's cut this, remove some spaces, save, and let's copy or paste this into a new file in the handler layer called signin.go, and I did not use an underscore here, just trying to remember how I did that. And let's go ahead and move this here. And of course we need to call this package handler. And then we'll add the code for the handler now and I'll try to explain it. I have pasted in the actual implementation of the sign in handler method here. At the top, what we'll do in most of our handler methods is declare the type that we expect to receive in the HTTP JSON request body. So we expect a JSON field of email using these struct tags and a JSON field of password. These binding tags are used for validation with the built-in Go Validator library, which Jin uses. We'll then create a variable of this sign-in request struct that's empty and holds nil values to start, and we'll use our bind data function to bind the data of the incoming request to this request variable. If something goes wrong, we return. 
That's because this bind data will automatically send errors. That is in this file here if you need to take a look at it. If we do indeed get valid data or a valid email and password, we'll set those on a model.user here. We then extract the request context because that's the context we want to send down the call chain. And we'll call our user service dot sign in, which isn't implemented, but we'll mock for our user tests. And we just created that mock, if you can recall that. All of about two minutes ago. <laughs> if we have an error in this sign in, oop, I scrolled too far. If we have an error in this case, we'll log that we failed to sign in and call this error in a logger. And you can implement your own logger if you want. And then we also will send this error as JSON. Next, if the user successfully signs in, we want to send them our access, or we call it just an ID token in this application, and the refresh token to the users. And we've already implemented this method, thank heavens. If there's an error, we're going to send that error to the user as JSON. Otherwise, we will just send a status 200 JSON response with the tokens on the tokens key. That will be all. I hope it's pretty straightforward. You may need to review the bind data and some of the work we did previously, like the token service. But we have plenty of those videos and tutorials for you to take a look at. In the handler layer, let's now add a file for the unit test here. And as with our sign up test, I guess it's grayed out here. Maybe you can't see it too well. But let's add a sign in test. Whoopsies. Dot go. Inside of this file, I want to create four tests, and we'll go over these again, so if you miss it here, don't worry, we'll go over it step by step. First, we'll test for invalid request data. We won't test all validation error combinations. Nevertheless, we'll test at least one case to make sure our handler sends the proper response. In reality, I should be adding unit tests for this bind data function here. But go ahead and do that as an exercise, I suppose. Don't you love when tutorials tell you that? We'll also test, secondly, for an error if it's returned by the user service. Let's go back to the actual function here. So if this sign-in returns an error, we want to make sure that we receive an error response. Next, we'll test the success case when this call succeeds and this call also succeeds. And in that case, we receive the tokens. And finally, the fourth test is if this throws an error, we want to make sure that we also get a JSON error response. Let's go back to sign in test and scaffold this out. First, we declare this to be part of our handler package, of course. And then we create the function called test sign in, which receives a testing.t reference. We'll set gin to test mode. And then we're going to create our mock user service, which is in the model layer. If you remember, we created a mock or we added to the mock user service earlier. And we'll also create a mock token service, which we've previously implemented. We create a gin router and then instantiate a new handler or our handler layer with this mock user service and mock token service. And again, as well with this default gin router. In our first test case, we're testing for if we receive a bad input body. We're not testing the validation or the bind JSON function we created. We're just testing to make sure we get the right response if there is any bad validation case. In this example, we create a request body with not an email here. So this should throw a validation error, or I guess we're not throwing because this is Golang, but you get the idea. We'll make sure that this uh, json.marshal doesn't throw an error. That's not super pertinent to the test. And then we create an HTTP request with, met with method post to the sign-in endpoint. This sign-in endpoint is handled by handler here. It will call the sign-in method we've created. We then serve this request to our HTTP router here, which we instantiate when we do the new handler. And we want to assert that we get an HTTP status 400 response here. And also, if we do get bad data validation, our sign-in method block should not reach the sign-in call or the new tokens from user call. And what I'm referring to here are these calls here. This one for sign-in and this one for new pair from user because we'll return right here. 
I've just realized that somehow I've put my sign-in test code in the sign-up file because I'm doing all this copying and pasting, and I put my sign-up inside of here. So I'm just going to quickly uh, maybe just change these file names and make sure everything works and be right back. Okay, so now our bad request data test we went over is actually in the sign-in test file. Okay, that's fixed, I hope. <laughs> the next thing we want to test is if the user service dot sign in method returns an error. And that is called right here. So we want to make sure we get an error JSON response. What we need to do in this case is create a set of mock arguments. So if we receive a context for the first argument and a valid user and email here, and user and email is set up right here. I almost scrolled up to the setup, but no, I set up the valid user email and password here. And we create an error because in this case, we want that method, the sign in method to return some sort of error. In this case, we'll just use an authorization error. And on calling the sign in method with these arguments, we want to return this error. We serve HTTP, we create a request body with the email and password from above. And then we want to, and actually we serve it here, and then we want to make sure that the sign-in method is called in this case, but that the new tokens from user is not called. And that is because we'll return after the sign-in method receives an error. And we want to assert that we receive a status unauthorized error. And that's because that's the error that this will hold. Next, we want to test the case where there's a successful token creation. We again create some mock arguments here. And the main difference in this case is that when we call the mock user service, we're not going to return an error, so we return nil, and that is on the sign-in method, of course. That is what we're working with here. And then, if the token service is called with these arguments, we want to then assert that we receive a mock token pair with an ID and refresh token. So this mock token pair is defined here. We don't really care about putting real JSON web tokens in here. We just want to make sure that there is a token pair. We then go down, we serve HTTP. This is sort of repetitive here. And then we create a response body that will contain this mock token pair so that we can assert that this is what we receive as the response body when calling this sign in handler or when sending a JSON request body to this sign in handler. We also want to make sure that our status code is status 200. And then we want to make sure that both our services are called. Our last case is when the signing in of the user to the user service works. However, we get some error with the token service, which really is something that shouldn't happen very much. There aren't any really reaching out to networks or anything, but we do need to handle this case. So we create an email and password that's different here. We create arguments for our mock call to sign in. We create arguments for our mock call to new pair from user of the token service. And in this case, when we call this new pair from user with these arguments, we want to return a mock error. This mock error in this case is just going to be a internal or an internal server error. We serve this again as before. And then we make sure that we get whatever the status of the mock error we created is as a response in HTTP. And then we also want to make sure that that error is reflected in the JSON body here. We also want to make sure that both the methods sign in and new pair from user are called. And that's basically it for the code today. We should probably actually go ahead and make sure we run these tests, especially since I was changing file names and playing around with more things than I should have. I'll go ahead and run all the tests for the handler layer here instead of just sign in. And this is verbose flag, but it would look like test sign up passed. Let's scroll up to test sign in. Here's test sign in, and it would appear that everything has passed there. Of course, go ahead and try to make these tests break, maybe change a code here or there or the response body to make sure they're working as expected. That's all for today, guys. Next time, we'll flush out the concrete implementation of user service dot sign in. Maybe go here to see. That's this sign-in method here. And then we'll also 
add the necessary user repository methods. In this case, we need to make sure that we can find the user by email in this case, and then make sure that their password is working as expected, or in other words, make sure that they entered a valid password. Anywho, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. If I don't see you before that, and hopefully I don't, hopefully I'm taking a holiday off. Hasta luego, chao.